There are things I'm not very good at, and you hide behind the shield. That's a bloody big weight to carry around. I want to welcome you to Humans in Business, where we go beyond a typical business video series, focusing not on the what, but the who. It's my pleasure today to be sitting down with the lovely Simon Rogerson. Simon is the CEO and co-founder of Octopus, a group of companies investing in the people, ideas and industries that will help change the world. Octopus has investments that have put more than £8.6 billion into the UK economy. They have a rapid growing renewable energies company and that's just a few of the companies that they run. Simon was recently named Entrepreneur of the Year at the prestigious EY Awards. He's an angel investor, father, husband and Ironman enthusiast. He is the inspiration for this whole series and one of my mentors. So let's meet the human behind the company with tentacles in many pies. Um, I don't know if you know this, but you're the actual inspiration for this series. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you very so, much. So, first of all, I want to thank you. I need myself being... to blame then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all your fault. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for being the inspiration. Uh, and you gave me a great piece of advice, which I've used ever since, uh, which is, in an interview, I should always ask the question, what were you like as a kid? So I thought, what better way to start this interview <laughs> than ask the question that you always ask everyone else? So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you were like as a child? Uh, OK, sure, of course I will. Um, I was extremely competitive. So I'll give you an example of how competitive I was. Yeah. Uh, something I'm not hugely proud of, but um, <laughs> it was sports day at school. And I happened to be quite a good runner. And it, I was, I think, nine or ten years old. And my parents were watching. And it came down to the final event, which was 200 metres. And I was running around the bend of the 200 metres and I was quite a quick starter. And there was a kid who was a bit quicker than me. And it was down to me or him who was going to win the overall sports day. Ooh. And I heard him coming up around the outside. And he was definitely going to overtake me. And so uh, I did it instinctively. I was running along my lane and I accidentally put my foot into his oh, lane. Oh, accidentally. Uh, yeah. And that meant he missed his stride and I ended up winning. And I think my parents were on the sideline and my parents were quite different. And my dad was on the side, kind of with his head in his hands, thinking, oh my God. My mum was on the sideline thinking, oh, that was pretty <laughs> That's smart. That's my boy. Um, That's my boy. So uh, I think the competitive instincts I've had since I was tiny, teeny um, have stayed with me. And I, you know, occasionally I try and dull that down, but naturally I'm a really competitive person. I don't mind losing as long as I've tried as hard as yeah. I possibly could. So competition is what's always pretty much defined me. Amazing. And I know you have three kids yourself. What kind of values do you try and instill in your kids? Is that competitive nature one of them? And there any other values that you try and instill in them as they're growing up? Uh, I think, uh, so two most important things I think with anybody, uh, but especially your own family. Mm -hmm. So giving children confidence, mm -hmm. uh, not confidence so it spills over into arrogance, but confidence that they can do anything they want and that they should follow the path that they are most passionate about. Yeah. So I think this idea that people must go to school, go to university, train as an accountant, join an accounting firm, it's so old fashioned and not the right way to think about it. So mm -hmm. whatever they're most passionate about, that's the direction I push them in. And then manners and having humility and being kind to people, I think is really important I think you'd be brought up to do that um, and the, the competitive instincts I think it's kind of something you inherit uh, my eldest is quite competitive my little boy is extremely competitive and the middle one is totally um, missed her she did, doesn't bother her at all in her sports day she actually ran down and she spent the entire sports day waving at us uh, on the sideline <laughs> she and, was happy uh, right? she was very yeah. happy yeah so uh, you know doing uh, happiness actually is everything mm. so do what you're most passionate about follow um, follow that path you are clearly very successful, um, you come off very confident, but there must have been times when you've been very courageous that just beforehand you be, had to be very vulnerable. So I think Simon Sinek talks about leaders and talks about how above all we're human and actually a big part of being human is vulnerability. Yep. Is there a time that you felt super vulnerable and what did that feel like and what was the courage or the inspiration or what came out of that vulnerability? Uh, so I think there's, uh, there's kind of two different schools and, uh, and without being... Uh, so without being sexist about it, men are worse mm. at this than women, okay. in my experience, <laughs> and older men are worse than younger men. Yeah. Uh, so old men are particularly uh, dangerous, I think, in this sense. So they see vulnerability as a weakness. Mm. So it's almost like they, they come to work uh, a bit like the CIA would come to work. So <laughs> it's kind of accept yeah. nothing, deny everything, make counter accusations, because they don't want to expose what actually might be there. Mm. And that's like a, you know, it's like a weight you carry around with you. So the idea of being, you know, when I was a little kid and when I started working at university, there are things I'm not very good at. And you hide behind the shield to pretend you do that. You, so you avoid situations that, you, that will expose that vulnerability yeah. or you avoid putting yourself in that situation because it makes you uncomfortable. That's a bloody big weight to carry around. And then yeah. I got to kind of mid-30s and I just went, you know what, sod it. I'm just not very good at that. 
and I'll be open to the fact I'm not very good at that. And, mm. uh, and it feels like a weight lifted from your shoulders. Mm. So I think vulnerability as a leader is super important. It makes you human, it mm. creates connections with other people, and the right humans will see that vulnerability and they'll want to help you mm. rather than use it to their advantage or manipulate the situation. Mm. So I think being really open is a sign or and vulnerable is a sign of real strength in a mm. leader. So yeah, some things I feel um, vulnerable about. Sometimes I uh, have felt quite anxious in certain situations. I don't like conflict. Yeah. So I don't like people shouting. I don't like, uh, I love a debate and I love mm. disagreement to try and get to the right solution, but I don't like argument and I don't like mm. hostility. I've never liked it. I didn't grow up in an environment like that. So I find that difficult. So uh, people recognize that, understanding it. Uh, and normally I, I don't want to be around people like that. So yeah. I, aggressive people. Uh, um, uh, people that take advantage of other people. I find those really difficult people to work with. So I'm quite open about that. So, so I know that in, in my company, I can have all the data, I can have all the metrics, I can have all the logic, I can have done all the research, but there's just something inside, there's like that feeling, um, which I call intuition or your gut feeling, yep. that you just know. Yep. And you can't tell how you just know, you just know. Yep. Have you had any experience of this and how much do you trust your intuition and that kind of magical feeling that you get? Uh, I trust my gut instincts and intuition and first impressions. Yeah. Almost 100%. Yeah. So we're in a world where you can see lots of data and that data is growing all the time. Yeah. So you need to do that as well. I don't like analysis paralysis. I don't like just spending ages. Like, is it option one to 10? Mm. Give me what you think we should be doing. Let me challenge the questions around it and then we'll make a decision. But I think first impressions when you meet somebody, probably mm. the one I had it with most in the last uh, 19 years since we set the business up. I met uh, Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson runs yeah. our energy supply business. Yeah, I and I met with someone, the guy that runs Boston Consulting Group, introduced me to a few people and Greg was one of them. Mm. And I sat in our room uh, talking to Greg and within no more than two or 300 seconds of meeting Greg, I thought, oh my God, you are genuinely a very special individual. Yeah. And he has proved to be absolutely that for the yeah. last three and a half years. Uh, he is remarkable. And mm. I think you, you meet someone like that once mm. every couple of years and I mm. interview zillions and zillions of people whether I sit with they just bleed energy yeah and you go that's the person I want to follow they've got something about them and you just trust your instincts so and unfortunately not unfortunately but as the business gets bigger and it gets more successful you start trusting your gut more and more and more which mm. is dangerous in a way so you want to make sure you surround mm. yourself with people who will challenge and their feedback will be really direct and I'll say are you sure you're doing the right thing why are we doing this and you want that kind of you don't want Simon Says uh, environment at all you want yeah. people, you want uh, no hierarchy you want equality you want people to mm. be able to say that you know are we sure we're doing the right thing mm. I love that so. you can say the Simon Says thing yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. great I have a question for you which might be a bit of a tricky one because I know how much you love Octopus but let's say I come into your office one day and I'm like Simon you can't be CEO of Octopus anymore um, I have to strip you of your title of your wealth of everything you've done who are you Oh, uh, I hope I would be exactly the same person. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, sometimes it, this freaks people out a little bit. So I have three children. I love my children to bits. I love my family to bits. Mm. Octopus comes a very close second to how yeah. I think about my family. Mm. So if you're taking Octopus away from me, yeah. there's definitely going to be some tears. It might even be a tantrum. Uh, but uh, what, <laughs> what would I do afterwards? Yeah. I think I would go and set another business up. Mm -hmm. So actually looking back and thinking about, you know, I only worked. I worked for another organization for two and a half years. But, uh, and you don't really understand why you're at university or school, what being yeah. an entrepreneur is all about, but mm -hmm. actually setting up your own business and the passion and the fulfillment that gives you, mm -hmm. oh my God, is the best career job. I feel like the luckiest man in the world. Mm -hmm. So I would go and set another business up. It doesn't matter what that business is. It could be a sandwich shop, it could be a fund management company, it could be an energy company. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But the sense of purpose and belonging mm -hmm. and achievement and pride you have in what you're building is just um, incomparable mm -hmm. to working for somebody else and working in a normal job. Yeah. Um, so I would go and build another business. I think. Do you think the reason why you could go to any company and kind of start something else up is because it's all about people and relationships? I talk a lot about it doesn't matter if it's B2B, B2C. I mean, I know Octopus has all of these different yep. arms. It's people to people and it's understanding yep. your customers and their needs. Yep. Do you think that's why you could go to any kind of company and, and build it up and hopefully yep. make them successful? Yeah, 100%. So it's the yeah. same thing. So great business is about how you make your customers feel. And so there was uh, someone's reading the other day and they're talking about companies and everyone competes on the same axis. So they say, I'm going to outprice you, I'm going to outmaneuver you, I'm going to outcompete you, I'm going to outfox you, whatever the word is. Mm. Uh, it's all about this bit up here. So it's all about thinking. Uh, and, so, and there will always be cheaper products, your products will be superseded, all this kind of stuff will happen. Nobody ever talks about outbehaving. Mm. So if you outbehave the competition, you will have mm. a sustainable competitive advantage because that's what people remember. Mm. 
Yeah. So if I asked you which companies do you love being a customer of, mm. first of all, the list is going to be really short yeah. because it's really difficult. You'll have hundreds of interactions with companies to just today, but it'll be very difficult to think of the ones that you love being a customer of. So when you create that kind of relationship with those customers, they will remember you and they will recommend you to the people they're closest to. Mm. And that's you know behind the mission we came up with an Octopus uh, uh, four years ago, and we said Octopus in every home, and, and part of that was around that yeah. thinking. I think adding love into businesses is, is really is the way forward, definitely in my eyes. So we asked you to bring some of your keepsake items and things that are really important to you. So do you want to talk me through what you brought? I'm really excited to see. Sure. Um, well, I'll start with this one. Uh, yeah. So this is a, a copy of the Yellow Pages, and wow. this is where the whole journey of Octopus started uh, back in... March 2000. Uh, so we left uh, what was a big fund management company, Mercury Asset Management. Uh, we left to set up our own fund management business. And Mercury, to give you an idea, Mercury was a fantastic place to work. Um, and you had access to all these really important people and businesses. And we used to have a lot of meetings on the sixth floor. And yeah. the carpet was deep enough to lose your shoes in it. So you'd have a <laughs> butler come and bring you teas and coffees. And then we left to go and work above an office, uh, yeah. above, uh, above a cost-cutter supermarket in Farringdon. Mm -hmm. And we needed to raise some money to capitalize the company. We need yeah. to raise two and a quarter million pounds. Wow. And the yellow pages is how we went about it. Uh, so we What's were the yellow pages? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is this is something uh, people who are in their th late thirties and forties will understand. Yeah. Uh, so we call. We spent nine months cold calling financial wow. advisors because we thought they might have some money or their clients might have some money. Mm. And in hindsight, it's one of the best things we could have done. It knocked any kind of softness or sense of entitlement out of us. Yeah. And uh, we actually only got, I think, five financial advisors to invest into the business. We've got some of their clients to invest into the business. Yeah. And at the end of nine months, we'd raised the money we needed to get started. So wow. this has a special place in my heart. Can I have actually. a look? Of course you can. Wow. So I still have my notes next this to it. This is where it all started. Before. Yeah, it does uh, have all of your little... Yeah. Oh, amazing. Great. What else have you got in your in your keepsake? Uh, I've got, I'll probably start with these next, actually. This yeah. is... Uh, these are my three, so I've got two girls, uh, Jemima and Sienna, and mm -hmm. a little boy called Harry. And my wife, Claire, she went across to the States and she was doing a, a, a retreat at Hoffman, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and she was there for about 10 days. And so while she was away, oh, our kind of army uh, organization that makes sure we were doing something every day. <laughs> yeah. And so I took the kids to go and watch a, uh, a play up in London mm -hmm. and we got slightly lost. It was near Islington or something like that. And we ended up outside um, Pentonville Prison. So <laughs> that was just a photo I took and then sent, and sent, to, my, it to, sent to my wife and made up some story that she actually, uh, I think, briefly believed was true. Um, but again, it's just stuff that makes you smile. Their and faces, they were playing along with you, weren't they? Yeah, they're they're definitely. Like, yeah. So it looks sad for mum, looks sad for mum. <laughs> okay, Simon, so I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. How do you have your eggs? Scrambled. Text or WhatsApp? Uh, text. That's why you didn't get back to my WhatsApp. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, Netflix or Amazon? Netflix. Favourite band? Oh, uh, Mumford and Sons. Ooh. Who would play you in the movie of your life? Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Who would play me in the movie of my life? I don't know. Some idiot like Jim Carrey or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Jim Carrey. <laughs> yep. Whoever make a movie, Jim yeah. Carrey, please uh, become involved. Humans are? Different. I'm happiest when? I'm with my family. I'm an entrepreneur because? I can be. Nice, you can be. The legacy I want to leave behind is? A business that outlives me. Amazing. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here today. And it's been really enjoyable getting to know you even more than I already did. So there's a little something for you if you want to give it a bit of an open now. Oh, we don't have a grand reveal. Got that anticipation like on Christmas, like, oh, like Oh, see, that's good. That's good. I uh, see. I didn't say Tom Petty, but that's very kind. That's very yeah, kind. No uh, it's a fantastic song. Yeah. Uh, that's so very I kind. heard. I heard it's one of your favourite songs. Yeah, it absolutely is. And what I loved about it is, I think when you're running your own company, like we both are, you feel like a lot of the time you are yeah. falling and you're figuring stuff out. That is really along kind. The way. That's so really kind. Just a little thank you, thank you for inspiring me and inspiring this series and being with us here today. So thank My you pleasure. so much, Simon.